All right, I'm back in Denver for what's probably my final interview with the world champ, and I am so happy and so proud to introduce Aaron Beverly, the 2019 newly crowned world champion. Aaron, my friend, congratulations. Thank you so much, Michael. Here's my question for you. I've been trying to get a different question with all the champs. Sure. You finished second in 2016. Yes. And from the comments you said earlier today, you walked away dissatisfied, not yes. because you finished second. What did you learn from that? from your dissatisfaction in the three years that led to your big crown the world champion today? What I learned most in that time span was that you have to have the right mindset. Mm -hmm. When I competed in 2016, I left the stage feeling regret because I fumbled in my speech and I wasn't regretful about the fumble because people fumble all the time. I've seen world champions fumble and they won the world championship. I fumbled yesterday and I won the world championship. What I was upset about was that I allowed that fumble to get into my head and I started worrying about the judging instead of worrying about the stories that I was telling and the message that I was supposed to deliver. And that was my biggest regret. Even if I had done everything right in that speech, that mindset that I didn't hit that story exactly right, that I didn't have that right mindset, that still would have burned me. And having the right mindset really is the key. So this time around, I had the right mindset. I did fumble, but I still powered through. And I had the mindset. I didn't think once about the judging. It was all about the story and all about the message. Correct me if I'm wrong in what you said in your comments today. What burned you about 2016 wasn't the second place trophy. It was no. you didn't deliver that story. The way, uh, it, you didn't give it the, the respect and credit it was due in your delivery, correct? Yes, correct. And that, to me, is one of the things I admire about you. What are your plans? You just won the world champion. You going to Disneyland? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not going, going to Disneyland. To Disneyland. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm going to do. And that was different from my original plan. So yeah. my original plan, I'm trying to do more on social media. I'm trying to teach more people about public speaking and doing it in a way that is accessible and affordable for a lot of people. Because I believe that public speaking is a skill that is key to world peace. If we learn how to communicate better, mm -hmm. then we can understand each other better. Yeah. And something that valuable shouldn't be out of reach for a lot of people. I tell people all the time, if we would sit down with people who are different than us and each have 10 minutes to tell our stories, man, would <laughs> yeah. we would have so much less tension and divisiveness Absolutely. that you talk Absolutely. about in Absolutely. your presentation. Um, God, I forgot my other question. Anyway, <laughs> I just want to tell you this. I've known you a short time. It's evident from stage and in, in, in getting to know you how humble and hum your humility you so is much. just incredible. And that's, to me, what makes you a champion. Not because you've got the trophy, you told an awesome story. You're a champion, man. And I look forward to seeing the impact you have, not just in Toastmasters, but around the world. So thank you so much. Thank Welcome you. to their club. And I hope to join <laughs> you one of these days. One day, one day. All right. Congratulations. Again, thank you so friend. much. Thank Hey, it's Mike here in the studio. I wanted to follow up this conversation with Aaron Beverly with one other point he had made. I forgot to ask him this question. In the middle of the interview, I couldn't remember it. He was so gracious with his time, I didn't want him standing there while I thought about this question. So here it is. He did something brilliant, I thought, with his story that eventually led to his world championship story. He had this idea, this experience he had had when he attended a wedding in India in 2018. When he took that story and put it on Facebook, he asked for feedback from people. Hey, what do you think of this story? What works, what doesn't? He got constructive feedback. And from that, he decided he had something that could work well in a competition and leave a lasting message. Clearly it worked. He's got the title. Wanted to share that with you very briefly. It was something he had shared in the meeting earlier uh, that day with several of the world champions, and I thought it was such a powerful way to get constructive feedback and evaluation on a story idea. You're not limited to where you can get feedback if you've got an idea that you think might work. So try it out. Use social media to get evaluated on your ideas. Talk with you on our next Daily Dose of Public Speaking Wisdom.